Hi, I'm Dr. Holly Lofton. I'm a board certified obesity medicine specialist, and I direct the medical weight management program at NYU Langone Health. With all the excitement about GLP-1 agonists, I get many questions from providers about which one they should prescribe their patient. So I'll tell you one of the methods that I use to determine it. Of course, we want to make sure that we're treating the right condition. So if the patient has type 2 diabetes, we tend to give them medication that is indicated for type 2 diabetes. Now, many GLP-1 agonists have a diabetes version and a chronic weight management or obesity version. If a patient has type 2 diabetes and obesity, they can receive either one. If a patient has only diabetes but not obesity, they should get the diabetes version. And if they only have obesity without diabetes, we tend to stick with those that are indicated for chronic weight management. So let's go through some names. In chronological order, the first GLP-1 that was used for diabetes dates back to Bidurion. And Bidurion had a partner called Bietta, and these medications are continuously on the market, but less likely so. Um, some people reported that these medications were inconvenient because they were even twice a day injections, and some people had some painful nodules with them. Now, some of the medications that were used for diabetes that are still in use and more common are, for example, loraglutide, which is known as Victoza for type 2 diabetes. It is a daily injection, and it has various doses. We always start low and increase with tolerance and desired effect for A1C. Victoza has a weight loss or anti-obesity counterpart called Saxenda. And the Saxenda pen looks very similar to the Victoza pen. Saxenda is a daily GLP-1 agonist for chronic weight management. And the weight loss in the trials, the scale trial for Saxenda, demonstrated around 8 to 12% weight loss. So those are the daily injections, Victoza for type 2 diabetes and Saxenda for obesity. Now, our patients are very excited about the advent of weekly injections for diabetes and for weight management. Ozempic is very popular. It is a weekly GLP-1 agonist for type 2 diabetes. And many patients come in asking for Ozempic, and we must make sure that we're moving them in the right direction depending on their condition. So Ozempic has a few different doses. It is a weekly injection. Uh, for type 2 diabetes, and it's found to be quite efficacious for treating diabetes. It has a counterpart for chronic obesity management. This medication is called Wegovy. It's a different pen, as you can see, and it is indicated for chronic weight management. Both of them contain the compound semaglutide. While all of these GLP-1 agonists are indicated to treat either type 2 diabetes or chronic weight management, Wegovy has a special indication that none of these do. In March 2024, Wegovy acquired the indication to decrease cardiac risk in those with a BMI of 27 and up with a previous cardiac history. And this has really changed the accessibility of this medication to such that those with these heart conditions with Medicare are expected to have access to Wegovy as a medication for weight management and decreasing cardiac risk. And more recently, another weekly injection for treatment of type 2 diabetes is called Lunjaro. Lunjaro is a weekly medication efficacious for type 2 diabetes. Its counterpart for weight management is called Zepbound. It is found to have about 20.9% weight loss over 72 weeks. The medications have similar side effects at different percentages, but the most highly reported side effects are nausea, stool changes, abdominal pain, and reflux. There are some other potential side effects. I recommend you read the individual prescribing information available for each drug to have more clarity about that. What is important that we stay on label for using the medications for many reasons. One, it increases our patient's accessibility to the right medication for them. And we can also make sure that we're treating the patient with the right drug as per the clinical trials. You have to remember when the clinical trials are done, 
the study populations demonstrate safety and efficacy for that population, but if we're using it for a different population, it is considered off-label use. So these are just a few facts about the differences in GLP-1 agonists and their use for type 2 diabetes and obesity, and I hope this has brought some clarity to the topic. Thank you.